everybody, and welcome to Kilimanjaro Safaris. My name is George, I'll be your game driver for today's photo safari through Harong Bay Wildlife Reserve. You'll notice the gate spot guide up above your head here, and it'll help you identify the animals you might see that I might miss. We don't always see all those animals, but usually you get pretty lucky to see most of them. Harong Bay Wildlife Reserve was established in 1971 to protect some of the local wildlife. How y'all doing back here? You have a good day in Animal Kingdom so far? How many been on safari before? Oh, I got a bunch of you back there. Did y'all bring plenty of food and water? Now, audience participation is allowed when the driver asks questions. Did you all bring plenty of food and water? Yeah. All right, for those of you too ashamed to admit you didn't, don't worry about it. I've got you covered. I got plenty of water on board. They teach us drivers how to cook termites many different ways. And we've got an abundance of termites out there in Savannah. So as long as you don't mind eating termites, we're in good shape food wise. You don't mind eating termites, do you? No. Looks like rice, but tastes just like chicken. You know you don't like it. You haven't tried it before. And your mom told you you got to try things to see if you like them. <laughs> We're going to let that truck get just a little bit ahead of us. We don't need mud or dust off our wheels. And before we go into the reserve, we usually call into the ward and then they're right where we're entering. So we'll do that in a few seconds. How are you guys doing? You all tired yet? Yeah. If you're not, you will be. This is the largest park Disney owns. It's so large you can fit Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios inside Animal Kingdom all at the same time. Not one at a time, but all three at the same time. Been to Magic Kingdom, thought it was a big park? Not. It'll fit in the safari you're going to go on. Were you not there where you park your car? Magic Kingdom will fit in Animal Kingdom's parking lot. You already get started on a two week safari? Yeah! Wednesday, let's go! Symbol one, the Airborne Patrol. Over. Simba one, this is Warden Crystal Lukua. Over. Jumbo Wilson, Simple one's entering her reserve right at Little Tory Forest. Over. I'm Jumbo, Simba one. Keep your eyes open and drive carefully. You should see lots of animals. You heard them, folks. We're going to see lots of animals. Over here on the left-hand side, laying down way back here in the bushes, is a reddish brown animal with white stripes on the side. That's a bongo. Bongos are known as a ghost of the forest because they're so very rarely seen. This tan animal right over here on the left-hand side, and the two more in back of it over there over the hill are greater kudu. They're the second largest antelope in all of Africa. Their males can get to be 750 pounds. On the right-hand side, you'll see two dark brown animals. The real small one with the yellow back is a yellow-backed diker. That's the largest of the 20 diker breeds here in Africa. And the larger one over there with a the brown, with the white stripes on its legs is an okapi. Okapi are a real close relative to the giraffe family, not the zebra family, just because they have those stripes. They're shy at them. They weren't discovered by Western civilization until 1901. Around the corner here on the left-hand side, is with Watering holder, we sometimes get to see the black rhinoceros getting a drink. I don't see any getting a drink right now, but let's turn the corner here and see what we can find. Oh, up ahead of us around the next turn or by the water on the edge there is some white birds with long yellow bills. They're yellow-billed storks. Oh, here's a black rhino laying down right across the water from us over here. And that rhinoceros can charge up to 35 miles an hour, and they have a one-inch hide. When well, they have that thick hide, you might think they don't have many enemies, but they have one important enemy, man. Man poaches those rhinoceros for their horns and has their numbers down to below 4,200 left in all of wild Africa. We're going to head out of the Tory Forest now and go towards the, the Safi River. Safi River is an area we get to see the Nile hippopotamus. Hippos are one of our larger animals here in Africa. Their males can get to be 5,000 pounds. And when a baby hippopotamus is born, they're already 85 pounds. Now hippos will stay in the water most of the day to keep those massive bodies of theirs from overheating. And while they're in the water, 
They can stay under the water for five to eight minutes at a time. Don't come out of the water at night, these hippo. We've got 100 pounds of these grasses along the river's edge. Here's a hippo out of the water, right over here on the right hand side. You can see what 5,000 pounds looks like out of the water. Let me get up here where everybody can see him and I'll stop for you to get pictures of him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold out for the camera. There you go, now you can get pictures of him. You need to stay seated though, you gotta still stay seated. Sit down please. There's some more hippos out here in the water on the left hand side. Now on this end of the island here that's nesting in trees are some black birds with white necks. They're white breasted cobarants. And the large white birds you see out there are pink backed pelicans. They live in colonies and nest in trees. I'll stop right up here by this little tree here so you can get pictures of these hippos in the water over here. Bless you. Bless you. Right, this next turn is one of the main reasons why we ask you folks to please stay seated. We gotta go over an old rickety bridge, and underneath that bridge is some of our less friendly animals. The Now Crocodile! Now those crocodiles down there, like their American cousin the alligator, can get to be 20 feet long. And those massive jaws in here have a clamping pressure of up to 1,200 pounds per square inch. They'll use that pressure to crush the bones of any animal they might capture. Got their mouth open for that one. And yes, for all you skeptics back there, they're all real. Man. The key to Disney about animals is if you're on a boat, they're fake. If you're on a truck, they're real. Well, send us a symbol, whatever. I just wanted to let you know that my ground control has seen a lot of elephant activity near the red light pit. You definitely want to check out that area. Roger that, Wilson. Before we go down to elephant country, folks, we're going to head into Savannah where we're going to see a totally different group of animals and a totally different ecological system. Speaking of different, how's that for a different looking tree? That's an ancient baobab tree. It's over a thousand years old. It's often referred to as the upside down tree. Plus the way its branches look like a root system, reaching out into the sky for water. Now those trees can survive months and months of drought by storing water in their trunk and don't go leafless nine months out of the year. The Savannah East Anthem this year is all part of the Serengeti grasslands, which stretches for hundreds of miles across East Africa. It's also the super highway for millions of migrating animals each year, and home to some of our more famous animals like the lion and the elephant. It all goes to make up the wild Africa that we're all trying to preserve. As you go around this turn, if you look at the right-hand side by the dirt road there, you'll see a little light red animal with a black stripe on its side. That's a Thompson gazelle. That little guy's fully grown. They only get to be about 60 pounds. The large light red animal right over here on the high grasses is a Patterson eland. They're the largest antelope in all of Africa. Their males can get to be 2,000 pounds and they can stand six feet tall at their shoulders. The savannah gets its look from the animals that live here. The elephants are the bulldozers. They knock down. Here's some more Patterson Eland on the left hand side. The elephants are the bulldozers. They knock down the trees to get to the tender bark at the top. The draft are the pruning shears. They eat the leaves on the underside of the tree so that the sun can get through and new grasses grow. The zebra and the wildebeest mow down these tall grasses while the little nibblers like the warthogs and gazelles trim up the edges. It all goes to create a natural system where there's enough food for everybody. You gotta be just a little bit faster than that, Mom. I gotta be stopped for a few seconds at a time. <laughs> Can't sit there for a day at a time. Just a few seconds. But just think about six months ago, we weren't allowed to stop at all. At least now we can stop for some of the animals. Directly in front of us here, you'll see four large piles of what looks like dirt. They're actually termite mounds. They get hard as concrete, and the elephants like to use them as a scratching post until they wear them down smooth, like this one over here on the right. And then the antelope and oh, the dark brown animals over here on the left hand side are sable antelope. The two little ones in front there with a little light color are the babies. Their profiles on the emblem of the Rumbe Wildlife Reserve. Up ahead of us on the driver's side are some Ancoli cattle. 
Now the horns on those Ancoli cattle can get to be six feet long, and they can have a circumference at their base of up to 20 inches. There's another Aunt Coley cow up here on the left. They're also known as Watusi cattle. Around the corner on the right hand side, you'll see some gray animals out there grazing. They're white bearded wildebeest. They make up the world's largest migrating herd. When they start migrating across the savannah, their numbers can reach one and a half million. Just straight ahead of us here in this tree, with his head stuck in the tree, is a reticulated giraffe. They get their name from the Latin word reticulata, which means net, with a net like appearance of those spots on their hide. And those giraffe with the fully grown can get to be 18 to 20 feet tall, making them the tallest animal in the world. And when a baby giraffe is born, they're already six feet tall. More Tommies out here to your right hand side. Out on a little rise over there. Here's another couple of wildebeest underneath these trees over here on the left hand side, going to be laid out in the shade. Uh, there's another draft up ahead of us on the right, laying down out there in the field. See him way out there laying down. <laughs> we get up here and there should be an opening up here where you can see him. So we'll let you know if we see anything over. Around the corner here on the left hand side is what's called Monkey Point. It's his name for a group of mandrels live in the area. Mandrels are the largest monkey in Africa. Mature with males can get to be 100 pounds and are noted for having brilliant red and blue markings on the faces and behinds. On the right hand side is what's called an elephant. Now I'll stop right up here where everybody can see the elephant. You can get pictures of That's a great picture there. Profile. There's a mandrel over your left shoulder out on top of the rocks over here on the left. This is an area reserve we sometimes can pick up the Harumbi Village radio station. Let's see if I can get anything on the radio out here. You gotta take that thing home and practice with it, Bob. You gotta get a little bit faster with that thumb clicking. I bet you can I bet you can text a lot better, a lot faster with that thumb. Our camera's better <laughs> I bet you do a lot of te she texts a lot of fans that thought, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, I gotta get rid of this radio, folks. Gotta concentrate going across this bridge here. It looks a lot shaker than one back here by the crocodiles. I need everybody to hold on to everything real tight now. Might even want to cross your fingers for me. Thank you. 